What's up everyone, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I wanna thank you for joining me. If you have not yet subscribed, remember it's completely free to do so and I would be so honored if you'd consider. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest content is available, don't forget to turn those notifications to on. Today we're back with Netgear. Now, I wanna make it very clear, I already did a full review covered all the specs and the key features and pro setup guide of the RAX 200. Now, this video is just a few things that I wanted to give you to be able to maximize your experience, but most of all, fix a major problem that continuously happens with your router. I'm so thankful that you're here. Let's get started. All right, so you saw my first video and we covered all the settings. And there was one thing I wanted to talk about before we get into the main substance of today's video. And that is the security type WPA2 and WPA3. When you select WPA3, as a lot of you want to do, some of you actually, quite a few people have reached out to me and it did not work. Now, you can select the WPA2 and WPA3 option. This will allow for both, but you might notice on some devices that you will actually see the signal cast twice. One of them will be the WPA2 and the next one will be the WPA3. If you're an individual that has a lot of new tech, WPA3 will likely not give you much problems. But if you have a lot of older tech in your house, you might run into the problems that a lot of you have reached out to me, and that is that all of a sudden you do not see your SSID or you can't connect. My recommendation is if you have pretty much all older tech, just stick with the WPA2 for now. And if you want to, you know, test the waters, go ahead and select the WPA2 and WPA3 option. Now, remember, you can do different ones on your 2.4 gigahertz and your 5 gigahertz bands. So you can decide to do just WPA2 on your 2.4 gigahertz, which honestly, likely if you're using that channel, that would be the one that I would recommend you um, select as connection type. And then on your 5 gigahertz, you can stick with the WPA3. Now. Here's the thing, when it comes to routers, and now this video can be used for basically any brand of router, what happens to us is we make a mistake when we're setting it up, and that is we go to auto software update. Now what we're gonna do today is I'm going to teach you how to go back to old software. Why would you wanna do that? I personally just ran into a problem. Netgear came out with a new software update. This router was performing like butter. Amazing. All of a sudden, it started to disconnect, not wireless signal, but the internet. And it was because of the software. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna teach you how to go back to basically any software that you could have had before. When should you do this? All right, you've had a router, it's been working perfectly, all of a sudden it's not. Before you jump to conclusions that the router has gone bad, maybe you're in your return policy, it could be the software and it's fixable. A lot of people don't realize that you are able to manually put any of the old versions on and once you do that, you keep it that way until Netgear or whatever company you're using comes out with their update. Here's a little secret, it doesn't always happen so fast. Sometimes it takes a long time. I'm thinking, okay, we have a software update, which of course can give you better security, but they also usually put a lot of bloatware on your router, trying to sell you, you know, monthly subscription services, so on and so forth. So you gotta decide what's more important to you better running router or having the latest software that's possibly broken. So we're gonna do this together. What you can do is you can do this on your phone, tablet, or on your PC, it makes no difference. We need to log back into our routers. I'm gonna put the screenshot up of exactly what you need to type into your browser. 
Now, in addition to that, if you're on a phone, go ahead, pull down the top menu, press settings, press your connections, and then when you get to your Wi-Fi, go ahead and hold down your Wi-Fi connection, and then hit settings and manage router. This will automatically take you in to the sign-in portion that we covered in video one. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so at this point, we are logged into our router. Now, as you can see, I'll put up screenshots. I'm doing this with you. You see basic and advanced. Go ahead and click advanced. Next, click administration. And then next, click router update. Now, there's a few things we need to do right here. First is where it says select one of the following options on automatic updates, disable this portion. We're doing this first so it doesn't automatically try to put us right back to the same new software because we're at this point going backwards. You will notice at this point that there is a little browse tab. That browse tab is how we are going to get the software that we're about to download to our PC, phone, or whatever you're using to update our router. So next, go ahead and open up a new tab. We have opened up a new tab in our browser and we type in www.netgear backslash support. As soon as you get there, you're going to see a bar that allows you to put in your product's name. Now, in this case, we're putting in the RAX 200, but remember, if you have a different Netgear router or extender that you need to change the software on, this is where you would place it. So you just type it in. Switching to a better close-up look, we can do this together. RAX 200, you can now see the photo of your router. You wanna simply press the Downloads tab. As soon as you hit Downloads, this will scroll up for you. It won't, because I've already done it for me. Here is the most current firmware. Now, let's just say you're on the most current and you're having the issues. You now know you need to go back to your previous version. You simply would hit the little plus sign here and you can pick whatever version you'd like. Now, since I know I'm all good and I'm just showing you this, I'm gonna go ahead and just press this version here. You're just simply going to press download. Go ahead and hit download. And before going back to your router, go ahead and open your download. Now that the download is open, go ahead and press extract. Let that finish. And let's go back to our router. In case you got logged out of your router and you're not sure where we're at, you wanna hit the advanced tab. You wanna to go to administration and then router update. First thing you wanna do again is disable automatic updates. And now you're going to simply hit the Browse tab. After you hit Browse, you want to press Files. Once you're in Files, you want to pick the RAX200 that has the little, little document icon. Now that we're back, you want to verify that it says CHK. You now know that's the proper file to upload. And all you need to do now is press Upload. It will take a couple minutes. Go ahead and do that now. The upload has completed. Now the firmware version at the top should match the firmware from the download. We jump back over, we confirm, and we're all set. At this point, everything should be fine. The only problem you might have is there might be a few items that don't automatically log themselves back in. That doesn't always happen, but that really should be the only issue if you have any, and everything should go back to the way it was. It should connect. All your settings should stay the way that you had them before, unless it was a new feature added by a newer software update. And then of course, one last reminder, wait until another update comes out to fix it. And at that point, update it. Don't forget that your router will constantly think it needs a software update. So you do not want to do that until you know at this website that there is an additional version from the one that you had problems with and one that came out after that would be the one that you would finally do your update for. I wanted to touch on a few key things that can really help your performance. And I also want to talk a little bit about 
the mesh extenders because with the mesh extenders, a lot of times when you're setting them up, you know, if you bought like the EX8000 a year ago and you want to use it with the RAX200, you're running on older software. And for some reason, if you try to access it through the Netgear Nighthawk app, it's not very easy to do the software update. In fact, I was unable to do it. So the trick to that is, is to get right next to the extender. Reset the extender by placing the little pin in there, holding it down for 60 seconds. Set it up as new. Get right next to it with any mobile device and make sure that you log specifically into the extender. Once that's done, you could do the same thing and upload the latest software to your extender using the same support website and downloading the file to your device and uploading it to your extender. Also, I wanted to remind you how important placement is. You want your router centrally located. You don't want it around any other wireless devices. You don't want it by brick walls, mirrors, microwaves, or cordless phones. And remember, you don't have to have your router right next to your modem. A lot of us don't realize that, you know, they give you this ethernet cable only this long. You could purchase them, for, you know, 100 feet long and put your router in a centralized location. You want it up on a shelf, never in any kind of compartment or under anything. And always, at least, I recommend once a week, first you want to reboot your router, okay? You could do that every few days if you want, a week, but the modem needs to be refreshed sometimes also. And what I recommend is, is first do the modem, wait, you know, a full five minutes for that modem to reboot and fully turn on and then restart your router. This sometimes will clear up any issues you're having, um, you know, if it's running slow or you're just not getting um, good distance. And also, a lot of you have reached out to me about how to find the best channel. The Netgear Nighthawk app has this feature built in. A lot of people can't find it because it doesn't really advertise it. When you're in the Netgear Nighthawk app, you will see a big box that says Wi-Fi Analytics. Click that box and swipe left. You will notice that there's several different things you can do, including a channel analyzer. This is so important because crowded neighborhoods, apartments, homes that are close together, you have so many people using the same channels, this is going to affect your speed, it's gonna affect your distance, and it's gonna give you an overall poor performing router. It doesn't matter how powerful it is if you don't pay attention to these crucial steps. If you live in such a crowded neighborhood, I actually recommend talking to your neighbors and saying, hey, listen, I'll be on this channel and you be on that. It might sound weird, but it can help both of you. So they might be, you know, willing to listen if you explain why. I hope this helped. Don't forget, I fully went over this router in detail, including setup. I'll leave that link right up here for you to check out. All right, so to quickly sum up what we talked about today, really the bottom line is, if you have a router and everything was working great, and you did a software update, or maybe you had the auto update on, and all of a sudden it has just really started to not perform well, disconnect, any problems at all, before going for the refund, do what we did today, Go back to the old software version and wait till the latest update comes out. As always, I want to slow things down for a moment and remind you, life is so short. Don't forget to love your family. Love your neighbors. Go out today and do a small act of kindness for someone. It's amazing how the smallest act of kindness can go such a long way. Remember, I do YouTube for you and you only. So come follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at JB Tech Fanatic 
or reach out to me in the comments. I am here to help any way that I can. I want to invite you to subscribe one last time. Say thank you for joining me. I can't wait to talk to you in the comments and see you in the next video. And until then, I'm JV Tech Fanatic and I'm out. Peace.